Let's take a look at the elbow joint. So the bones of the elbow joint comprise, are comprised of the humerus, the radius on the lateral or your thumb side, and the ulna, which is on the medial or the pinky side. So looking closely, here is the humerus on the bottom part. Um, you have your trochlea, which articulates with the trochlear notch, um, your coronoid and your uh, olecranon processes. So that's on the medial side. And then you have this other articulation between the radius and the capitulum of the humerus. And so there's this little dent on the tip of the radial head that kind of moves over this round surface of the humerus. So you have an articulation of the ulna and of the radius. Here's some views on an x-ray. So this is a sagittal plane view. Um, and this is the, the plane that the elbow moves in, sagittal plane about the medial lateral axis. So it goes through flexion and extension. Um, over here we see a frontal plane x-ray. So you have the humerus proximal, and then you can see the olecranon process going in the, to the olecranon fossa. And then you see the radial head articulating with the capitulum. So our elbow joint goes through flexion and extension, and it can go through about 125 degrees of flexion um, from anatomical zero, which is kind of zero degrees extension. So from anatomical zero, your, your elbow does not typically um, move past anatomical zero unless, right, this is something we call people double jointed, and that would be if they have a small um, olecranon process or a very deep olecranon fossa. There is something called the carrying angle. So notice when you look at a frontal view of a person, their forearm goes at an angle to where their humerus lies, and this is called the carrying angle. So it's from the axis of the humerus to the axis of the entire forearm, and this uh, angle that's formed as a carrying angle. Typically it's 10 to 15 degrees in males and in females 20 to 25 degrees. Now the stability of the, the elbow joint, um, when it, you're in extension it is usually bone, that the bony articulations, the uh, uh, olecranon of the ulna fitting into the olecranon fossa of the humerus makes this a very stable joint. But when you go through flexion, you rely more on your ligaments for stability. The collateral ligaments um, help. So we have the radial collateral ligament, which is on um, the thumb side or the lateral side. And you have your ulnar collateral ligament or your UCL, um, which is on the medial side. And this uh, is talked about the UCL um, in baseball players, so a lot of people have had reconstructions of that ligament. For articulation between the radius and the ulna at the rad proximal radial ulnar joint, you have the annular ligament of the radius, which kind of encases the radial head to keep that radial ulnar movement um, stable. I just want to show a few more. Um, images of the ligaments of the um, elbow region, radial ulnar region. Um, so we talked about the lateral collateral ligament and the medial collateral or the ulnar collateral and lateral collateral is sometimes called the radial collateral. We talked about the annular ligament, which is surrounds the radial head and this proximate, proximal radial ulnar joint. Um, I also wanted to highlight the oblique cord, which goes from the radius to the ulna, and it, see, it resists excessive supination. Another thing to look at is a visual of this interosseous membrane that we mentioned in the bone video. So it is this membrane that goes in between the ulna and the radius. Um, it's very stiff and it holds the form together and it helps uh, when we are 
uh, have compressive forces throughout our forearm. During, say, push-ups, uh, anything where we're uh, engaged our hand on some sort of surface and there's a compressive load going through your forearm. Here's another image showing elbow joint movement in the sagittal plane about the medial lateral axis. Right, so this is a sagittal plane. Here's medial lateral axis. So we have flexion when you, this uh, angle is more acute. And then we have extension going back down to anatomical zero. This uh, indicates 140 to 150 degrees of flexion. It's going to depend on the um, basically the body composition of the person you're looking at. Right? So if they have excessive biceps brachii, hypertrophy, that may decrease that, the degrees of flexion they can go into. And again, just reiterating this uh, zero degrees to five degrees of extension past anatomical zero, sometimes called hyperextension, depends on the bony makeup of your olecranon process and or your olecranon fossa.